This is the brand new DJI Neo 2 and in this video I'm going to be comparing it to the Neo 1, the Avata 2, as well as testing it out with all the new quick shot modes, flying it with the normal controller, flying it with the motion controller and even flying it in full manual mode with the FPV controller. The Neo 1 and 2 do have a very similar shape and style with the main differences being that the Neo 2 is a bit darker and it's also a bit larger across the board. The Neo 1 weighs 136 grams while the Neo 2 comes in at 162 grams with the digital transceiver and the transceiver on its own weighs about 9 grams. The digital transceiver is removable and essentially just a range extender for when you want to use the drone with a normal controller or an FPV controller. I'm back at the farm for filming and it is scorching hot and it's also a lot windier than I would have liked but we'll just have to make do with it. And we've got all three drones here ready for flying. So we've got the Neo 1, the Neo 2 and the Avata 2. Of course we need to compare the battery life of these three drones so I launched them and just let them hover side by side until they each landed at 5% battery. The Neo 2 was the first drone to land after 12 minutes of flight, the Neo 1 then landed after 13 minutes and 5 seconds and the Avata 2 stayed up for 17 minutes and 18 seconds. One of the major selling points of both the Neo 1 and the Neo 2 is that you can fly both of these drones without a controller connected and that's even without a smartphone connected. And they both got a few modes that you can choose from to do this, but the Neo 2 actually has some brand new modes. So what we're gonna do now is run through all of the modes, compare them side by side, and see what's new on the Neo 2. To cycle through the quick shot modes on the Neo 1, you just click the button on top of the drone and it'll switch between them in order. To launch, you hold the button down, keep the drone in your palm, and it'll take off automatically. The Neo 2 now has two buttons on the side of the drone, which lets you cycle left and right through the different quick shot options. And if you hold down the left and right buttons together, you can actually change all the settings of each mode on the drone. There's even a little screen on the front of the drone now, which lets you see which mode you're in and what settings you've changed. To launch, you hold down the red button on the side of the drone and then just hold it in your palm and it'll take off automatically. The drone is a very simple pullback and reveal shot. However, with the Neo 2, you will notice that it goes much further away. And that's because in the settings, the Neo 2 has a maximum distance of 20 meters or 65 feet, whereas the Neo 1 is limited to 10 meters or 32 feet. The circle is one of my favorite quick shots, and I think it's pretty self-explanatory what it does. And you'll see that the Neo 2 is just a bit smoother when it does the shot. And if we crop in, you'll be able to see that the video quality on the Neo 2 is so much better. The rocket is a basic rising or lowering top-down shot with an optional spin. And the only difference is with the Neo 2, you can go up to 20 meters instead of 10 meters on the Neo 1. Spotlight is probably my least favorite mode of all where the drone will just stand still and basically follow you around wherever you go. Boomerang is a really cool dynamic shot where the drone will basically whip around you. But with the Neo 1, it is pretty stressful because there is no collision avoidance. You really do need to be careful and make sure that it's not gonna hit anything while doing this maneuver. Both drones have a manual control option where you can fly the drone using a smartphone and you basically just get these little joysticks that pop on screen and mimic a normal drone controller. To be honest, I don't really like this mode. I find it really difficult to get precise maneuvers with the drone. However, if it's all you have, then it's not that bad. If you're gonna use this mode, DJI does actually claim that the Wi-Fi range has been extended from 50 meters on the Neo 1 all the way up to about 500 meters on the Neo 2. So while I was on the farm flying these drones, I also tested the maximum range while using the phone as a controller. Strangely enough, DJI doesn't seem to show the horizontal distance on the Neo 1, but I got up to about 50 meters or 164 feet where the drone actually stopped me from flying any further. For the Neo 2, I actually managed to fly about 150 meters or 500 feet away before the signal cut out, which is actually really impressive, but it's still a lot lower than the 500 meters DJI claimed. The first new quick shot is a helix where it'll fly up around you in a spiral and I think this one actually looks really cool. Next we have the dolly zoom which is kind of cool but in my opinion it's just a bit of a gimmick because it has to crop in so much the video just doesn't look great. Next we have master shots where the drone will take about one and a half minutes to do a compilation of five different shots and this one's pretty cool if you're not really sure what to go for and you just want the drone to do its thing. Lastly, we have selfie shot where you can actually predetermine what angles you want and the drone will essentially go out and take a bunch of photos of you and whoever you're with. And to be honest, this one's actually pretty cool. I think it's quite a nice way of getting a really good group shot without having to think too hard about it. 
Both drones do have a follow mode, but this is where the Neo 2 rarely outshines the original Neo. I think because of its lack of obstacle avoidance, the Neo 1 is limited to only following behind you. There are definitely some really cool new no controller shot upgrades to the Neo 2, but my favorite one has got to be the gesture control. And now it's actually tracking me and I'm able to change its position by holding my hand up. So when I hold up my hand like this, the drone is now tracking me and I can point exactly where I want it to go. And I can also raise it up above the camera there and back down, spin it around. And this is really fun. It obviously feels like a bit of a Jedi trick, but you know what? It works brilliantly, to be honest. And I'll say I think I want it to come closer. Then all I do is I put up a second hand, push it together, and now the drone's actually coming closer to me. And now if I want to move it further away, I do the same thing. I hold up my hands like this, and then I move them apart. And then the drone flies away on its own. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, that is really fun. But the main purpose of it is that you're able to reposition or reframe your shot mid follow mode. I did also do a comparison of the follow modes while riding the one wheel at the farm. But of course the Neo 1 is limited to only following from behind whereas the Neo 2 can follow from any angle you want. This is probably the best use case of this drone that I can think of. It's honestly just so easy to take it out, launch it, let it follow you move its position and get some really simple great shots. If you haven't noticed already, the footage coming out of the Neo 2 just looks so much better than the Neo 1. The two drones actually have the same sensor, so I think the reason we're getting such an improvement in video quality is because the Neo 2 now has a two axis gimbal, which means that it's able to crop in way less when it's stabilizing the footage. Because there are so many new quick shots for the Neo 2, there's actually a really cool option where you can select your favorites and then the drone will only cycle through these so you don't have to go through the entire menu every time. Another one of the many ways you can control these drones is just with the standard DJI drone controller. And your options for that are gonna be the RC N3, which uses your phone as the screen, the RC2, which has a built-in screen, and with that, you're gonna get a lot more fine control, and it's gonna be a lot easier to fly the drone around than using the fiddly little joysticks on the screen, and you're also gonna get much better range. So I'm gonna fly both of the drones here on this beach now and see what shots I can get with these controllers. When you're flying with a normal controller or FPV, you can lower the sharpness to minus two, which I definitely recommend to get a bit more of a pleasing image. The reason the colors do look slightly different is because the sun did go behind a cloud when I was shooting with the Neo 2, so just keep that in mind. At first, the shot from the Neo 1 doesn't look too bad, but when you switch over to the Neo 2, you just realize how much better it looks. You can also see how much wider it is, and that's because the Neo 2 isn't cropping nearly as much because it's got that two axis gimbal. When the Neo 1 looks straight down, it does struggle because it's not stabilized in this axis, so the Neo 2 looks much better with the top down shot. Another thing to note is because it is faster and more powerful, the Neo 2 feels a lot more confident in the air and I feel much more comfortable flying it further away and over water. It's definitely not only the gimbal which is improving the image quality on the Neo 2. The camera does now have a wider aperture of f2.2 versus 2.8, which is about 62% more light. And on top of that, the Neo 2 definitely has a better image processor because now it's able to shoot up to 4K 60, whereas the Neo 1 was limited to 4K 30. If you look at the bushes in this shot, you'll see how much more detail the Neo 2 holds. And also if you look at the mountain in the background, you'll see how much noisier the Neo 1 is. I'm a big fan of being able to shoot at higher frame rates like 4K 60 because it means you can take a simple shot like this and slow it down to 50% times speed to get a really nice cinematic look. Both drones can shoot vertical video, however it is just using a sensor crop, it's not actually rotating the camera, and the Neo 2 can also go up to 2.7K at 60fps, whereas the Neo 1 is limited to 1080p at 60fps. Both drones are able to take 12 megapixel stills only in JPEG mode, and they do both look good, but again with the Neo 1 you can see that it is a fair bit more crop than the Neo 2. And overall, the Neo 2 definitely does look a little bit better. Another big upgrade of the Neo 2 is it now has omnidirectional obstacle avoidance, including a LiDAR sensor on the front of the drone. I was actually really impressed with how well the collision avoidance worked, even though it's using very few sensors, and there were multiple times where it did save the Neo 2 from crashing. 
Even in my circle quick shots, the Neo 1 crashed into the side of a rock, whereas the Neo 2 identified the rock and actually stopped right in front of it and came back safely on its own. Now it's time to fly these drones in my favorite way, which is of course with the FPV goggles and controller. All three of them can either fly with the RC Motion 3 or the FPV Remote Controller 3. And in terms of goggles, you can either use the DJI Goggles 3 like I have here, or you can also use the much more budget-friendly Goggles N3. I'm first gonna fly the Neo 2 with the RC Motion 3 controller, which is not my favorite way to fly it, but I wanna see how it performs with that before we move on to the proper FPV remote controller. Using the motion controller is really simple and intuitive. You squeeze the trigger to move forwards and then you tilt the controller back to pull the drone up and then you tilt it forwards to push the drone down. Then you also tilt the controller right and left to turn right and left and there's even a little cursor on the screen to show you where you're pointing and that's essentially where the drone is going to fly towards. Flying the Neo 2 with the motion controller was actually surprisingly fun and it did really well considering how windy it was on this day. This is what the shot looks like unstabilized and this is after being stabilized using Gyroflow. I also flew the Neo 2 with the motion controller at the beach where there was almost no wind and it performed really nicely. Obviously, I would prefer it if the drone could fly a bit faster than this, but for its size, it's not that bad. I think more importantly, I felt really comfortable flying the Neo 2 with the motion controller. It felt really stable and in control, and I had no issues flying low down to the waves to get these kind of shots. Of course, I flew the Neo 1 with the motion controller as well, and the experience is nowhere near as good as with the Neo 2. Even with zero wind like this, it was still very wobbly and the drone just doesn't get fast enough to get any meaningful FPV speed. Once you stabilize it in post, the video does look pretty good. However, when you're flying it in real life, it just constantly feels uneasy and like the drone's always about to crash. I'm really excited now to switch to the normal FPV controller and I'm gonna fly all three drones so we can see how they compare. Flying the Neo 1 with a normal FPV controller really isn't that great. It just doesn't have enough power to do what I wanted to do, especially in a high wind situation like this. The stabilized footage comes out okay, but I really just don't feel comfortable flying the Neo 1 in manual mode. I wish I could say that the Neo 2 is much better in manual mode, but unfortunately again, it just doesn't have the power that I want to feel confident while flying this drone in full manual. At least the stabilized footage does come out pretty good and this looks like quite a nice smooth shot. I was hoping in a low wind scenario it'd be better, but even with the live view stabilization turned on for the Neo, it still didn't feel strong enough for me and I just did not enjoy flying in manual mode. At least you can shoot in up to 4K100 in FPV mode for the Neo 2, but again, I just didn't have the power that I would like to comfortably fly the drone in manual mode. And this is why I would highly recommend if you are gonna fly in FPV, use the motion controller because it is a way better experience because it limits the top speed of the drone. In comparison, the Avata 2 feels like a really great FPV drone. It just has that extra power that you need to fly confidently and get better shots. Of course, with the improved camera, the final footage from the Avata 2 is gonna look a lot better, as well as being a much easier and more fun drone to fly around in full manual mode. I'm not saying the Neos are bad for FPV, I'm just saying maybe stay away from manual mode or fly slowly when you're flying in it. In terms of whether I think the Neo 2 is a worthy upgrade over the Neo 1, in this case, it's a definite yes. There are just so many improvements across the board, except for the battery life, that make this a really good upgrade if you already have the Neo 1 or if you're looking for a new drone. If you're interested in picking it up, I'll put the links to the latest pricing in the description below and I'll see you in the next one.